So you just finished Path of Exile's campaign mode and are ready to start the end game, and the first thing you see is this. What is that? What is this? What are those? I spent hours learning how this works so that you don't have to. This is a guide to the Atlas. Now let's get to the point. First up, ignore all of this for a second, and what we have left is the base atlas. Occasionally, maps will drop in your travels. While in your inventory, you can use chisels and orbs on them to buff them up. Hurl them into the map device to spawn a map. Anytime you are going into a map, check it on the atlas. Bonus objective for the map to be blue or better? Fine. Slap an orb on that thing before you do it to get that objective checked off. The number of bonus objectives completed shows here near the middle. By getting this number up, you improve the drop rate for higher level maps. Next up, what are these things over here? Mouse over them and each one has a name, most of which should be familiar. Einhar from Bestiary, Alva from Incursion, Nico from The Delve, June from Betrayal, and Xana. Even if you are new to the game, you probably ran into all of these people at least once on the way here. The numbers are how many times you can add them to a map. White numbers for white maps, yellow numbers for yellow maps, and red numbers for red maps. Simple. So, if you have a mechanic you really enjoy, call them in as often as you can. Each time you finish a map, there is a chance to get another one, and every 24 hours when PoE does its daily reset, you get one of each based on the last map you did. Next up is the Conquerors of the Atlas. That's this thing and those round things. Occasionally, when you are clearing maps and minding your own business, a Conqueror will barge in and start messing with you. Afterward, when you check your Atlas, you will have an area glowing similar to this and this thing over on the side. This means that you have to do a map in that area that says it will get their attention three times to fight them. So if I want to fight the Conqueror in Glenock Cairns, I can go to my map tab in the storage, type in Glenock, and see if I have a map that says Warlord Influenced. Then by running that map, I check off another one of these counters. After three of them, Kirok and Xana will notify you in town they have located the enemy citadel, and you can do a map that ends with a portal to the Conqueror. When you beat the Conqueror, it will drop a watchstone. This marble can be placed in the Atlas to increase the level of maps that drop in that area. This does not change the level of maps already in your possession. For example, you can see this crystal ore map is level 4, but if I put a marble in that area, any future crystal ore maps that drop will be level 7. Additionally, you can use sextants on watchstones to buff an entire area with more risk and reward if you wish. So, hunt conquerors, get their marbles, put marbles into the atlas to upgrade it, pretty simple. Now, mousing over a citadel will tell you how many watchstones are required to spawn the next conqueror in that region. For example, in New Vastir, here you can see I need at least three to get the next conqueror's attention. Once you understand how to use the marbles to unlock more conquerors, which then unlocks more marbles, you can level up the maps that are dropping all over the Atlas. Following this logic eventually ends in one of the game's end bosses, Cyrus, Awakener of Worlds. It is also worth pointing out the awakening level shown in the center. For every four watchstones socketed in the Atlas, they can be moved over to the left side if you don't want to do this, the risk and rewards are increased accordingly with the details listed here. Now that we know this, let's glance at a random map. You can see the arcade map here has an awakening bonus by completing this map on at least tier 14, which will require marbles to get that to drop, and awakening level 1, this bonus will get checked off. Mousing over the completed Awakening Bonus Objectives counter will show that that increases the effect of modifiers on non-unique maps. Again, more risk and reward. Lastly, let's talk about these bars above the Citadel. Those are part of the Maven mechanic. By killing bosses in that region that are of high enough level, you will get the Maven's attention. You can check if a map is high enough level for its region by placing it in the map device. If this icon is lit up, then she likes to watch. FBI, open up! Kill enough bosses in a region with her watching and you will get a Maven invitation to her realm. Throw that into the map device, go there and beat all the bosses she watched you fight simultaneously. For you marauders, that means at the same time. And she gives you talent points for your map. 
These basically boost the maps in the region they are in. You can add more breaches, better legions, more strong boxes, and much more, effectively making each region specialize in a different type of gameplay if you wish. The Maven will raise the bar each time you complete an invitation and wants to watch higher level fights after, which will require the marbles to make that happen. Do this enough times and you will get crescent splinters from fights within the Maven's realm, which can be combined to make a map where you fight the Maven herself as another endgame boss. And now you know the basics of the Atlas, you're welcome. Click these links.